magnified, O oh Lord. Be magnified in this place this morning, O oh God. I have made you to swallow in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie that you were unable to help me, but now, oh Lord, I see my rock, see my rock, help my heart, and show yourself strong, and in my life, and we
taking our reading from Isaiah 9, um, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of a Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. And the soul felt it world A trail of gold The weary world rejoices For yonder praise A new and glorious morn Oh! 
Amen. That was awesome. Our second reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 15. I read. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a shelful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He had dispersed abroad, He had given to the poor, His righteousness remained forever. Now, He that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed so increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes to us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for our professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for, and for your liberal distribution to them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto for his unspeakable gift. This word abide in our hearts in Jesus' name. Mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly singing a joyful song to God so we need to get into the spirit of singing joyful praises to him because he is born this time and that's our time to just sing merry songs to God <laughs> I hope you guys like this version come on everyone come on merry dancing come on Let's 
season. Hallelujah. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a season of goodwill. Amen. Hallelujah. See, this season means different things to different people in the world. For some, it is just the end of the year. For some, it is all about shopping and, you know, just going like, okay, well, we just need to go and shop and do some certain things. I mean, we've had uh, January today. This is a time to reflect for some. This is a time to reconcile account for some, to look at it and say, what did I do well? What didn't I do well? I, you know, that's it. So, this season, means different things to different people. Okay? But in the annals of history, there is no season so profound. There is no event so divine. There is no activity so life-changing and eternal than this season. Amen. And I'm not going to get into the argument of whether Christ was born in July or February. It is of no consequence. I will not be drawn on any debate about when he was born. Even the Queen of England has two birthdays. And if I choose to celebrate my day on any day, I believe I have the legal right to do so without any prejudice. 
Hallelujah. So I'm not going to be drawn on when Christ was born. Was Christ born? Yes. Hallelujah. Has the event of the past 2,000 years been the most significant and the most epochal in the annals of history? Yes. Even those who don't believe in Christ know it. History knows it. Heaven records it. Hell understands it. Hallelujah. And there is no denying it. So why do we celebrate Christmas? And a lot of people will just tell you, look, Christmas is just another day. This and that. Why are you guys bothered? Some will even say that, oh, it was, uh, uh, there, there was a festivity of some, uh, some unbelievers and something that, could, that, that happened around that time and all that. All oh, that is nonsense. Hallelujah. I've had it all. You probably would have had it and things like that. And some say it's been commercialized. It's all about, it's no longer about Christ. It's just, a, oh, they are selling, they are doing all sort of things. That's not important. Hallelujah. For the purpose of our discussion and for this service, I will take the first reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9, verses 6 to 7, just as we read. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with the justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Then I'm going to go to John 3.16, which is a well-known, I mean, if anybody is just born again today, the thing they will know is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. He could have given anything his God after all. He gave his only begotten son. And this is the season when we commemorate the biggest and the most everlasting gift. That humanity can ever record. That eternity can ever imagine. This is the season. Hallelujah. And it is the gift of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you look at that book of Isaiah, I'll just go, just because today is not a day for us to really sermonize about so many things, but I'll just go. Look at that book of Isaiah. If you go back, if you backtrack to Isaiah 8, 22, and prior to that, you will see when you go to 22, and they shall look unto the earth and build trouble and darkness, dimness and anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Hallelujah. Go to Isaiah 9. 2. Hallelujah. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them as light shine. That is the answer. Hallelujah. Christ is the answer to the darkness. Hallelujah. That was spoken about in Isaiah 8. He's just saying, like, look, this thing may persist for some time, but Christ is coming. Hallelujah. In fact, the book of Genesis to Revelation, Christ is this, the center. If you read any book in the Bible and you couldn't find Christ, you, you don't understand what you're reading. You don't. From creation. As from the moment of creation that darkness was upon the face of the deep, Christ was the light. 
Hallelujah. And that is the light that lighted the path of every man that come into the world. You will see whether it is in type or shadow or typology in the Old Testament, Christ. Every single thing in the Bible, the 66 books, is about Christ. And until and unless you understand that, you don't understand the Bible. The purpose of the Bible, the, the program is restoration of humanity from the fall. That is the program. And everything from Genesis to Revelation is that. That is what it is. That is the exact thing that you see. Whether you are seeing a salvation that is wrought by Samson, it is Christ in typology. Whether you are seeing Joseph that is preserving the life of the Egyptian, it is Christ in typology and shadows. Until you see that, you do not understand Christmas. Hallelujah. That is the program. The culmination of the plan and purpose of God for redemption of humanity is the birth of Jesus Christ. That is what this season is all about. Man was lost. Man was heading nowhere. Darkness was prevailing. Man was condemned to eternal doom. But Christ came. Hallelujah. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Hallelujah. So perhaps somebody is just telling you and say, Let's have this, uh, this, this thing you are talking about, this Christ and all that, they, do, they really don't get it. Hallelujah. It doesn't really matter how pervasive, how dark, how, how terrible the situation is. Christ came. Hallelujah. Everyone uh, won. Uh, the devil lost the battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 418. And then I'll just a, a quick one. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Luke. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's just look at Christ and uh, you know, because that is what the season is all about. There isn't any other thing. And in fact, our existence on earth is not about anything but Christ. Forget about it. Our moment in in this world is just a drop in eternity. And without Christ, it's not worth it. It does not matter how much money you make. It does not matter how many years you spend. It does not matter how much you achieve without Christ. Amen. But for our eternity to be granted, that's why Christ came. Hallelujah. Let's look at Luke 4 18. I'll call, just quickly call this thing so that we can look and order. And this is Jesus Christ starting his ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the answer to the human problem. That's what Christ came to do. And without him, there is no hope for humanity. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Hallelujah. And that is why we can dance. That is why we know that even if our body here continues to decay, we have an eternal home. We have a body that is going to be preserved. Hallelujah. This body will drop, and, uh, and but we continue with him. Hallelujah. So we are not bothered. We are not worried. We may be getting from prob- problem to problem, from trouble to trouble, but we know that our eternity is guaranteed. All because of Christ. Hallelujah. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why we gather. That's why we shout. That's why the world does not understand us. That's why when we come out and they say, look, despite everything, hallelujah, we celebrate Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is the last joker of God. Even when the devil thinks he won. And God was looking and said, look, you don't understand. Hallelujah. Amen. The last joker of God is Christ. 
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Death 31. Hallelujah. Amen. But the author of life cannot be killed. He can't die. Hallelujah. Amen. So regardless of whatever you are facing, remember Christ was born and Christ won and Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Not because of any other thing. Not because we have everything. Not, not because that, um, you know, according to the word standard, that everything is hunky dory. Not because of that. But we know that regardless of whatever takes place on this earth and in this plane, there is a home for us in heaven that nothing can change. Hallelujah. But to understand Christmas and to be part of this, Matthew 16, 13 and 14. Let's have a look quicker at this so that uh, when we go home to celebrate and all that, we would be able to have a reason to celebrate other than the fact that we, we have turkey to eat and jollof rice to go with it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Matthew 16, 13 and 14. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. But he said unto them, Who do you say that I am? That's the question today. So you're celebrating Christmas. Who is it to you? Who do you say the man of the son of man is? Your answer to that question will determine your eternity. It is not about celebration. So all this is, you know. So you have to dig deep down into you and say, Who is it to me? Hallelujah. What does it represent to me? These people gave various kinds of answers. Hallelujah. And so I will take time to just talk a little bit about who he is. He is our kinsman redeemer. Hallelujah. Is God enough to be 100% God and man enough to be 100% man? Christ. Hallelujah. So that he can feel the feeling of our infirmities and stand in our place. To deliver us. He is our scapegoat. Hallelujah. Amen. He is God with us. He is our righteousness. He is our holiness. He is our peace. So if today you lack peace. He is the prince of peace. Hallelujah. He is our glory. And the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. He is our justification. Hallelujah. Amen. So it does not really matter what the enemy tells you you have done. It's your justification. He paid. Hallelujah. So when the enemy comes with what you have done, you come with what Jesus has done. He is God in us. It's not just God with us. It's God in us. Is our light and our life. Hallelujah. So when there is darkness, he is the answer. It's our reconciliation. Hallelujah. It's our eternal advocate, our savior, our God, our will in a will, our divine wisdom, our king, the bearers of our sin, the master of our life, the bringer of our victory and our eternal hope. Our brother, our lover, the almighty king is he. The seed of Abraham, the son of man, and the son of God. The amen of God, the bright and the morning star. The I am that is I am. Hallelujah. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. He is the truth. 
the way and the life. It's the resurrection and life. It's the only password that opens heaven. Hallelujah. It's the good shepherd. It's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's a true friend. It's the high priest of our confession. The author and the finisher of our faith. It's our way maker. It's the soon coming king. Is the manifestation of divinity in humanity. He is God. He is the highest. He is, he is God's highest for our lowest. Hallelujah. Is our guarantee for eternity. Is the seal of God. Is our bulwark. Hallelujah. That is who he is. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the enemy comes with their nonsense, you will have what to tell them. He's our healer. When they come with their disease, you say he's our healer. When your mind begins to wonder, is your peace. When the enemy comes against you, is your general, the leader of the army of the almighty God. Hallelujah. So when they come to you and say you are not righteous, say it's my righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. When it comes with their disease, it's your healer. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Oh, we give you glory. We thank you because you've given your best, even for my worst. In my depravity, you, you bankrupt heaven. You empty yourself of everything that makes you God and wrap yourself in flesh just for me. Hallelujah. And so I can stand and say you are my God. Father, thank you. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the adoration. If I have a thousand tongues, it will still not be enough. Thank you. Because from eternity past to eternity, to the end of it, I will continually sing your praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. It's time for our offering. Hallelujah. I don't know. You might just look at it and say, God hasn't done so much for you from the beginning of this year to this. I don't, I don't know. But even if you are in that state and that is your situation, I believe that you just might not have a good understanding. Because you only need to look around you. A man that does not have a shoe was complaining. And then he looks around and saw a man that it does not even have a leg. No talk of a shoe. He can't, there's no leg. And why he was at it and, and the man that doesn't have a leg was looking and said, look, I don't even have a leg. This man, I know that I saw a man that doesn't even have both arms and leg. Hallelujah. So if you look at yourself, you have every reason to give him all the glory. Because only the living will give glory to the most high God. So with that understanding that you open your mouth, you are still able to talk. You are able to walk. You are able to perform. Regardless of everything, you still have hope. Even here. I want you to package your offering. I just appreciate what God has done for you. Even in this season. Hallelujah. I think the envelope has gone around and... Um, I think we should have our bank details up there so that if you just want to do that, you'll be able to do it. Hallelujah. Immortal Rock of Ages, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you, we glorify you for the opportunity to be here and to gather unto your name. For being able to identify with you. Father, we thank you for the salvation that you brought our way through Christ Jesus. At this time, we just want to appreciate you by giving just a token out of what you have given unto us. Let it be acceptable in your sight. 
a sweet smelling offering and let it be used to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Mary, boy, child, Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says.